uh, Washington Redskins face the Minnesota Vikings in this NFC wild card playoff. First down from the 31 yard line. They stay on the ground and this is sliding off and very close to a first down. A 10 yard gain or a little short of that as Brad Edwards comes up to make the stop. On third and eight, off the play fake. Good protection. He throws a strike for a first down to Chris Carter at the Redskins 43 yard line. Well, perhaps this is what the offense has lacked while Chris Carter's been out of it. He is a big playmaker for the Vikings, has been ever since he came here. This is not an easy ball to catch. He's thrown behind Carter. He spins around and covers it up as he goes down. That was a 14-yard pickup, and Salisbury going deep for Carter again. Caught at the one-yard line. Oh, wow. I mentioned about Carter coming from Philadelphia, cut by Buddy Ryan, and that's what he did for the Eagles. 11 touchdowns. In that season of 89, Ryan let him go, and he made many of them just like that by going up and taking it away from a defender. Denny Green all week. We have to get off to a quick start. Oh, we can't allow the Redskins to dictate to us the pace of the game. I would classify this as a quick start. That's a great catch by Carter. Mayhew, great position on him. He just went up and took it away. Randall McDaniel, the guard, is the fullback in the eye, and he leads the way for Allen's touchdown. Yard drive, the big play, the 42 yard pass to Carter. The drive began with a measurement on third down for a first down. They convert it and they keep on going and lead 6 0. Well, what this drive also started with, Alan Frank, was a number of successful running plays. And Salisbury, whatever jitters he had, are long gone as he stakes his team to the 7 0 lead. Second and 10, fake to Craig. And Salisbury going deep. And his contact, but incidental on a pass intended for Anthony Carter, picked off by Mayu. And Mayu with a great run back out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Gary Zimmerman guided him out as he took it all the way back to just about the line of scrimmage. You could see that Anthony Carter lost his footing about three or four yards before the pass got there and allowed Mayhew to basically just watch right here, watch Carter loses his footing. And so uncontested, Martin Mayhew is able to intercept that pass. Third and four at the 27-yard line. That's Ron Middleton in motion. And it's Ernest Biner. That's an incomplete a pass. Incomplete pass. A forward pass, and it's simply an incomplete pass. And the Redskins can't convert. And we'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. The pressure that time put on by Al Noga, number 99. 44-yard field goal attempt for Chip Lowmiller, who is terrific on artificial turf and terrific in this stadium. He played his college ball at the University of Minnesota, and Chip Lowmiller loves the Metrodome. Third and 10, Minnesota perfect thus far on third down conversions. Pressure. And Allen makes the catch, but Wilbur Marshall is right there to wrap him up after a gain of three at the 49-yard line. And that'll create Minnesota's first punt of the day. Harry Newsom, second in the league in punting this year to only the Oilers' Greg Montgomery, sends it down to the 17-yard line. And this is Brian Mitchell. Mitchell across the 50. And Mitchell is brought down from behind at the 28-yard line as Jake Reed the wide receiver out of Grambling saves a touchdown. Well, we know that Reed has got some speed now. Mitchell, a gifted return man, a, a very valuable part of this Washington Redskin team, and you saw why there. A little step now, back to the inside, spots the gap, kicks it into another gear, gets away from the punter, and then watch Reed run him down. Monk in motion. Ripon with good protection and has it picked off off a deflection and up to the 36-yard line goes Todd Scott. Carl Lee created the interception. He was the Viking who got his hand on it. And Todd Scott runs it back.
to the 36-yard line on second and seven from the 40. And that pass is picked off by Brad Edwards. <laughs> and Edwards to the 33-yard line after faking the lateral and holding on. And Washington with a big break. And Wilbur Marshall with the pressure that time on Salisbury. <laughs> they won him on the move. Look, look at that. Edwards. That's a ball that just sails on him, Frank. Great hands. Now, yeah. he almost laterals the ball off to man here. Man standing there. Hey, I want it. And he very wisely tucks it away. Third down and eight at the 31-yard line. And Rippin guns it incomplete. And a flag comes down at the 18. Art Monk, the intended receiver. And Todd Scott gets up and can't believe he saw the flag. This will give you a good view. Did he hit him early? I think he did. It's third and 10. And it's caught at the four-yard line by Art Monk for a first down and it will be first and goal and again the zone defense they stayed in it even deep in their own territory Monk came all the way from the left side took it down deep brought it across and that time Rippon how do you explain it that was a perfectly thrown ball right in the numbers between two defenders it couldn't be thrown better it's almost like those are the passes that Mark Rippon is throwing better than the shorter touch passes Seems the more he's able to crank it up and let it go, the better success he has. First and goal, and they give it to Biner. And Ernest, looking for a yes. signal, gets it. Touchdown. Ernest Biner behind Mark Schlereth on the right side, putting it into the end zone to give Washington its first lead of the day. Watch the blocking there on the right side of your screen. Here comes Schlereth around. There's Middleton's block on Dolman. Schlereth pins Merriweather to the inside, and you got a touchdown. Low Miller for the point after. And so the interception sets it up. The key third down completion to Monk. The touchdown by Biner. And with 9.23 to go in the half, the Skins lead by three. Third down and eight. They roll the dice here. They roll the dice, and Salisbury's pass is incomplete, intended for Chris Carter at the 41-yard line. Second and 16. And Rippon throws a strike to the 22-yard line to Clark, who nearly has his head taken off, and the helmet late flies. Mike Merriweather was the man who made the tackle. Flag came in at the end. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness by the tackler. He grabbed the headgear and wrenched the man down by the headgear. 15 yards from the dead ball spot, first down. He was the wrencher and Clark was the wrenchee. And you're right, Dan, he lost a couple of yards trying to pick up the yardage for the first down and they will get it on the penalty. Third and three, four and a half to go in the half. 10-7 Washington. Here comes Dolman. Rippin underneath, and Mitchell drops it, but there's a flag down. Flag down. Back at the 38-yard line. And so is Rippin. Remember last October the 25th? I don't think I ever saw a quarterback take the pounding he did here. It's against the Redskins, and so the Vikings are going to get the Holden, football. Number 87 offense. Penalty declined. Fourth down. Penalty declined. It's fourth down at the 44-yard line. Oh, and it's a fake, and it is Brian Mitchell inside the 40, inside the 30, biggest play of the game, takes it to the 18-yard line. They've run that before. They've run that with a lot of success. Brian Mitchell, the up back, with a first down inside the 20-yard line. Everything was set up for it, and it works. Well executed. Brian Mitchell, why not? And it starts with the center guy, Bingham with a perfect snap. Ernest Miner inside the 15, takes it down to the 11-yard line. Gain of seven. Wayne Severe with a smile on his face. Any special teams coach would be grinning. That's a, it's the biggest play of the half. They're up by three. Minnesota was going to get the ball back, and now Washington's in a position to go up by 10. Third down and five. Very big play for the Vikings defense. They're trying to hold him to a field goal attempt. And it's Biner making the catch, and Biner is at the eight-yard line, and that should be enough for a first down. And Brian Mitchell is inside the five. Brian Mitchell is in for the touchdown. As well blocked an offensive play as you will ever see. 
brilliant execution by the Redskins. The lead blockers, the tight ends, and the offensive line, Frank, that is just, that's beautiful. Minnesota thinking pass. We talked about the size. They're small up front. They're thinking pass. You come at the draw play. They're in their pass rush mode, and the Redskins blocked it out beautifully. And Merriweather, 57. Watch him to the right. He's going to be the only Viking with a clean shot, and he falls off Brian Mitchell. Well, here's Lowmiller for the point after with 1.56 to go in the half, and so that fake punt, and Brian Mitchell executing the fake punt, going into the end zone, picking up with Ricky Irvin's hurt, and the Skins have scored 17 unanswered points. Third down and 11. Pressure from Mann. He steps up and then goes down at his own 49 in the grasp of Fred Stokes. Mann forced the issue, and then Stokes finished him off. And the Vikings are forced to kick. Third and seven from the 27-yard line. Everybody's covered, and so is Salisbury at the 21 by Fred Stokes, who gets his second sack. Get it right on the head, Al. That's a, that's a coverage sack. First down at the 29-yard line for Washington, and Brian Mitchell starts with a five-yard gain to the 34. Second and five, and Mitchell fights his way up to the 40-yard line. Big day for Brian Mitchell, Mike Merriweather, makes the tackle again if you don't follow the Redskins that closely Ernest Biner's their key guy Ricky Irvin's is their number two guy but Irvin's is hurt today so Brian Mitchell's had to fill a big role today and he has filled it brilliantly as you look at Ricky Irvin and Parker locked up right now one-on-one -on -one with Monk as Mitchell somehow finds room up to the 45 yard line gain of five Carlos Jenkins makes the tackle and we have less than five minutes to play in the third quarter Second and five from the 45-yard line. And there is Mitchell getting to midfield. And if the nose of the ball is on the 50-yard line, he's got a first down. And he does. Goldman can't sack Rippin, who then finds Clark at the 26 for a big first down. On third and 16, Goldman just couldn't get Rippin down. And then Mark stepping up and finding the open man. And Gary Clark knew he was going to take a shot, and he got one. But Mark Rippon, he sometimes, like I said, he can break your heart, and then he can absolutely make your heart beat. What's Out of sheer joy. That's a great play. Get him away from Dolman, and he finds Clark and fires it in there. What's unusual about that is that the Redskins, I mean, the Vikings always have such good pressure in the middle. Their two tackles are always in the quarterback's face. And that's really unusual. Dolman forces him up in the middle, and Rippon's able to get it away. Third down and seven. Rippon for Clark, who's open. Touchdown. Oh, and a great read with Rippon and Clark. Picked up the single coverage on the blitz. The Vikings ordinarily sitting in that zone. Rippon read it. Clark read it. And yeah, let's see him on the sidelines. Eric Everett didn't read Watch it. Watch this. There it is. He was John all over him as he left the field at halftime. And what a combination. <laughs> wide open. Back of the end zone. Low Miller for the point after. So they had a third and 16 to the Redskins. They converted that. Rippon finds Clark in the end zone. And we've got 17 seconds left in the third. And the Redskins try to win a trip to Candlestick. Don't cry. Here in the fourth quarter, the Minnesota offense and defense better come together and have the quarter of their lives. Second and ten, and Salisbury goes down again. Stokes was a part of that. And Fred Stokes, I don't know if they'll give him the whole sack or a half of that one, but if they give him the whole thing, that's three. Third and 21. Stokes puts the pressure on this time, and Stokes is going to get another sack at the 35-yard line. And we're going to check with scoring to see if they gave him the full sack the last time. If that's number four for the day, for he only had three and a half during the regular season. Jim Hannafin, the offensive line coach there, former head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals, trying to tell Brian Mitchell what to do so he can take credit for it afterwards. <laughs> 190 yeah. combined that yards for Brian Mitchell. First down up at the 40. 
six-yard line. Here's Ernest Finer taking it to the Minnesota 45-yard line. So chewing up yardage and chewing up the clock. Down to 11 and a half to play. 24 to 7, Washington. And second and oh. two as they take the play clock down to two. And Ernest Finer picks up the first down. Just perfect execution. Oh. Second and two, take the play clock down to two. Keep the uh, sticks moving and keep the clock going. First and 10 at the 42. Again, the play clock is down to three. At the snap, Brian Mitchell finds some room. And Mitchell takes it to the 37-yard line. An unlikely hero, Brian Mitchell, a guy getting a chance to see a lot more action today. The snap this time is at two. Here's Mitchell. A, totally. play, a play that was anything but pretty, but it nets uh, another first down. A totally busted Close. play. Kobe is back in the game at the 30-yard uh, line. It's first down and 10. Ernest Finer. This nine-yard game. This is surgery without an anesthetic. You talk about dotting the I, crossing the T, and putting the exclamation point at the end of how you take care of the football. This drive right here is symbolic of a team that is the world champion until proven otherwise. And according to Joe Gibbs, yeah. we're looking at a miracle. And Jim Hannafin, our offensive line coach, uh, believe me, he's a happy guy. This is his kind of football. Isn't it? Only five minutes left. And Finer on third and seven, taking it to the 10. It's fourth down and two on what was the 13th play of this drive, which has consumed the almost the entire fourth quarter 27 yard field goal attempt Rutledge puts oh. it down and the Vikings finally get a break somehow some way Lomeler misses an easy one third and ten and Salisbury's pass is incomplete as Perry Allen who's been almost a non-factor today has it jarred loose by A.J. Johnson and the Redskins have effectively taken just about every offensive weapon out of the game all day long outside of that first drive. Here's Green, and he takes it across the 50 to the 46. 189 yards for the Skins and nine yards in the second half for the Vikings. Extraordinary. If I had to draw up a defensive game plan for a Super Bowl or a game I had to win, I would find Richie Pettibone's phone number and call him. One of the fine, fine minds in the game. It's a great group that Joe Gibbs has collected. And what a tribute to this football team that's gone through the adversity that they have this year with all the injuries, everything that's happened. And here they are coming in at 9 and 7, knocking off the Vikings at 11 and 5. It's a great tribute to them. Skins continue on. The unlikely hero today is Brian Mitchell. Tremendous day for him. California, here we come. We'll sing the skins on their flight back to Washington in a week of preparation. And they'll next play next Saturday at Candlestick Park. The Redskins at the Metrodome defeat the Minnesota Vikings 24 7.